this began because it was time to push myself harder. Oh, there you go, yes! Otherwise, I was looking at another 40 years of wearing sweatpants to work. Mr. Dobble, are you currently using steroids? I think they messed me up. Don't worry, that's what we specialize in here. Congratulations on the film. Yeah. I was really surprised by it, and um, it was more in the sense that it's been sold as sort of like a comedy, but it's this really dark, story that really happened, and I think a lot of people don't realize that before they see the film. And, and I'm curious, I know, I know it's been described as a passion project for you. Passion projects like Schindler's List. This is uh, the cool script of sitting on the shelf project for 12 years. I've been wanting to make it for 12 years. Uh, uh, the producer hung in there and said, I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna make it. And he must have thought I was bullshitting. But uh, uh, finally after Transformers 3, I told the studio, I said, I'm done doing robots. I'm gonna, I'm gonna shoot myself if I should do another robot. I said, I gotta do something small. And I'm gonna do this movie, Pain and Gain. So I told Brad Gray, who runs Paramount, I said, I'm gonna do this movie. He goes, why do you wanna do it? I said, because I see it, Brad. I, I said, there's something interesting, quirky about this movie. And uh, I'm gonna do it for 25. It turns out I did it for 26, and they were busting my balls. <laughs> and after I made a billion, they were busting me. Well, one of the, the things about it that's so interesting is, is it's, a, it's a story that obviously a lot of people in the Miami area probably remember from you yeah. know, when it happened originally, but how many times do you remember going through saying, no, no, yeah, exactly. this is like exaggerated. Exactly. Like, exactly. Was there one thing in particular that, that you sort of, you know, locked in on is like, you know, I just can't believe this is the one thing. The barbecue actually... scene. The barbecue scene, it's like, it's like they first started inside the warehouse and they moved it outside the warehouse and the audience will understand that when they see it. But, you know, it's like, can these guys be bigger knuckleheads? You know, they were delusional, bizarrely funny. It's just that the, the crime set itself up as just being that great YouTube video of the dumb criminals getting stuck in the chimney, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, one of the, the great performances in the film is from uh, Dwayne Johnson. I think a lot of people will be surprised by that too. He's not really just playing a dumb guy, he's playing a guy who's been through Very AA conflicted, and... conflicted guy. And he, he was very scared to play that part. At the week before we're ready to shoot, he's like, I can't do this. What, what do you mean you can't do this? You know, and I'm like, uh, and so I wrote him this long letter. I said, listen, Will Smith didn't want to run down the street with his shirt open and bad boys won. We had a fight about it. And then Will Smith now says, he says, Michael Bay made me a movie star when I ran down that street in Miami with my shirt open. Um, and I, I, I listed like 10 different actors, different things, and uh, how they worked out well. And I said, you just got to trust me. Was there something you'd seen him in that, that made you think he was perfect for the role before? Well, I've seen him as stuff, but there, there was a, uh, when he played, uh, uh, it's a, uh, is it Get Shorty? Oh, right, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. The sequel, yeah, Get Shorty. Yeah, yeah, funny. For breaking entertainment news and more, follow at HitPix on Twitter or visit hitpix.com.